All right, we're back online. This is my second stream after my first stream ended five minutes ago because my camera died. But let's just start over. So today I'm going to show how to create a little static AMP project without any other tools than the Elm executable itself. Um, I will though assume that you have Elm installed already because this is actually different on every, every platform. Um, you can just follow the instructions, the installation instructions on the official Elm homepage. I've already done this here. Uh, I'm working under the Linux, Linux under my Windows, but actually that doesn't matter. This should work pretty similar on every platform once you get this installed. So let's just start right out on a on a blank canvas, create a new folder, uh, call it Elm Primer, going to change into this folder. So nothing here. We're going to create a little hello world index HTML file. With the cat command, we can just look into what what's stored in this file. So we'll just put this out. It's hello world in there. And if we go to the browser and I open this file, it says hello world. And just to prove that I'm not cheating here, I'm going to start right away editing this file. Hello world, world 9000. I'm using Vim as a text editor, but obviously you can use whatever editor you want to modify your text file. So now I've uh, changed Hello World to Hello World 9000 and saved the file. Going back to my browser, refreshing Hello World 9000. So right away, I'll, here you see uh, I've opened the developer console. I can also show you how that works. That's I just use right click in my Firefox, but Chrome has something similar and other browsers as well. Go to inspect and then I get this console and right away Firefox is complaining about that we didn't do our homework on this HTML file which is obviously correct because it's not even an HTML file it's just a text file so let's go right back and change this into something more HTML like HTML opening tag closing tag going to have a head section closing the head section and a body section, obviously. Going to close this as well. And let's do a little title tag here. I have to close this, obviously, as well. So that's more more like HTML, but it's still unhappy about the the character encoding that we didn't specify so let's just do a little google search html encoding utf8 sounds good uh, let's go to the declaring catech um, official w3c section and we see we can just uh, steal this meta tag from from the page. So I'm going to insert this here. Meta char set equals UTF eight. So let's go back to the browser and close that one and see if it's happier. And the warning error is gone. So happy happy. That's our first valid. HTML file we're going to start out with. So let's go back, quit the text editor, go back to the console. As I said, I have already uh, Elm installed, so I can see it's here, the command, That's and that's basically everything we ever going to work with. And that's what I like so much about Elm. If you compare it with other, especially JavaScript-based uh, environments to develop with you have to install the webpack and npm or yarn and 
have a thousand dependencies and file. if you start with elm it's really only working with the elm executable and that's actually what i want to show today so let's go back to the elm homepage and see what they tell us about this so we've started um we've installed it and now i'm going to change it to the javascript interrupt section and uh, actually i skipped one step I'm not sure where it introduction says it why function as core core language there's an init command for Elm now that's more about the language itself follow along la 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 okay actually I don't know where it tells us how to start Ah, yeah, Elm init here. It's also in the installation section. So we'll just do an Elm init, and as in other frameworks like Rails, for example, you have this this command which basically sets up the basic project structure. So, and what I also like about Elm is that uh, there's been really taken a lot of effort, put a lot of effort into making the the communication of the Elm compiler or the Elm environment with the developer great by providing a lot of nice uh, messages. So it gives, it tells you actually what it does. I leave it to you to read this through when you're doing this yourself eventually. So for now, we're just going to go with the default and say, yes. Uh, if we look into the directory, we see now we have a full, uh, an Elm JSON file. Let's have a quick look at this one. And that's, that's basically the the project infrastructure file or dependency file where we list what other like we are going mainly going to modify this if we need other dependencies other libraries that we want to use uh, and the other thing that it created for us is a source folder and if we look into the source folder we see there's nothing so that's the next step we are going to do is to create uh, a main elm file we can name it differently, but that's uh, kind of what everybody starts out with usually. Oh, so actually I'm just, I'm just showing, showing you this. So let me just quickly go back here. So yeah, I just had a look before at the Elm JSON file, but as I said, like for now the content is not really relevant for us. Uh, there's nothing in the source file. So I'll just start uh, by creating a main Elm main.elm in our source folder and then I'm going to go and uh, go here to the example section or the and just grab this whole first example for the button if I manage to scroll to the bottom and then I'm going to dump this into my Elm file. So for some reason it doesn't realize the syntax. Okay, that's more like it. So as you can see, it's just the, the code. And I'll go about explaining a bit what this does in a minute, but for now I just want to compile it. So I'm going to leave my text editor and I'm going to use um, Oh, let's just look it up from the from the docs again, just to show that it's, there's really everything there that we need to get started. I'm going to revisit the JavaScript interrupt section, and here it says to compile it and to print and, uh, into a into a JavaScript file. We need this command, so that's what I'm going to type here. Elm make source main elm minus minus output equals elm.js or let's call it main.js then I have less typing and more copying to do in the next step so now it's complaining about that the, the module name is not lining up with the file name that's that's fair so let's change this I'm going to go into my editor and I'm not naming the module at all. So what does I need to do? 
module main exposing this. Let's try to compile again and now it compiles. So that's nice. So now we have a JS file. So the Elm compiler compiled our Elm source code into JavaScript, which is executable by the browser. So now we just, we, we cannot load the JavaScript file itself because we need to give the browser an HTML file to interpret. So let's ha see how the Elm tutorial page or the, the docs tell us to wire up that stuff that's also in the interop section, embedding in HTML. So we are going to grab this script line, which basically just embeds you know, includes our JavaScript file into our HTML file. And after that, the, the main magic is this other script tag where it actually says, calls this Elm main init, in, init function. That's the part of the, or that's the entry point that's created by the Elm compiler in our mail, um, uh, Elm main JS file. So let's quickly uh, copy over those things. Uh, open my index HTML. Grab this script line. It doesn't want to copy. I'm just struggling with the Windows key bindings. There we go. And we're also got, going to grab this other section here. Going to fix the indention. All right, so what does it do? We also copied this weird diff container, which is called main app, and that's actually needed to give uh, our Elm application uh, an element in the DOM to hook into, basically. This is the thing that's going to be replaced by our app. So the, the Elm init call ex uh, expects a node, and a DOM node, which we get by, that's just native JS here, that we find by getting it by the ID my app and then it's going to replace it. So let's save this. We're going to go back to our initial uh, index and reload. And now we see we have this hello world button application in Elm from, uh, from the documentation. That's all you need. So as you see, and uh, as I mentioned, that's what I like about Elm. To get started, you don't need a lot. You don't need a, a local server or a, a package manager. Like all you, that you need is really included in, in the Elm file itself. So I think that's for my little first test stream. I'm, I'm happy with how far we've got. I'm looking forward to maybe actually talk to people in the near future. Uh, I'm going to hopefully like the plan is to put up a little series where I write a Tetris clone uh, in Elm based on that setup. So you you don't need any database or server side background knowledge for that. It's just going to be browser only and Elm only. Um, the next episode is where I'm going to show a bit about my local setup, which I've tweaked a bit so that I don't have to reload manually that often. And uh, then we are going to jump right in. So thanks for staying with me or eventually rewatching the video. Bye bye.